Hi, this is Megan with Beta Holly, and today I'm going to show you how to make a wide or double cobra paracord bracelet. And as you can see, if you're familiar with what the basic cobra looks like, this is just two of those side by side, and they only have one cord down the center, so they're a little thinner. So for this braid, I'm going to use a wider plastic buckle. I'm using a one inch wide buckle. And I'm going to make this for a man. And so I made it longer. Standard man's bracelet is eight inches. That's the standard, you know, wrist measurement. So I went ahead and figured my buckle length on these one inch buckles is about two and a half to two and three quarters of an inch. It's kind of hard to measure with the curve. So you're going to take your wrist measurement and add an inch because it's thick. So you need a little bit of extra room. So if you have an eight inch wrist, you're going to want a nine inch bracelet, but then you're going to take the buckle measurement out of that. So instead of having nine inches of braid, you're going to have nine minus two and three quarter, which is about six and a quarter. So it's a little bit of math to figure out exactly how long you want your braid to be. You can also try just trying it on when you get to that point. But I'm going to go ahead and use about eight feet of one color and two eight foot pieces of a second color. On this example here, I used two lengths of the camouflage and one length of the black. So I'm going to do another one now that has two lengths of black and one length of gray. The general rule of thumb is to use about a foot of paracord on each strand for each inch of braiding. I like to, to go a little bit more than that. I like to use about a foot for each inch of bracelet you want. So I'm doing eight feet. I've, I've found that even if you have a little bit left over, it's better than running out. So go ahead and find the middle of all three of your lengths. And these buckles have, the male end has a double loop. It doesn't just have one, it has two. So in order to get the knots to sit nicely underneath, you wanna make sure that you have the part where the lark's head knot crosses over facing away from the buckle. I'm gonna go ahead and knot these all onto here with the lark's head knot separately. So I'm going to grab one of the cords, whichever one you have two colors of, and you're going to bring it through the top opening up from underneath. And if you can't quite get it through, you can use a pair of chain nose pliers to give it a pull. And then take the loop back down through the lower opening and pull the ends through to create a lark's head knot. Next, you're gonna put in the string that you have just one of, whichever your other, your complementary color is. And again, just pull it up through the top opening, back down. And tie a second lark's head knot and then pull these nice and snug because you're going to need to make room for a third string in there. So push these down, make some room, and you're going to put your last cord into the space there. Okay. And just like before, you're going to bring it back down and make a lark's head knot. And go ahead and give these all a nice tug and get them really tight. And they should just sit back underneath the bar here on the buckle. 
So once you have your three chords knotted into all six lengths coming out here, you're going to split the center, your gray cord, and, and have that go off onto the right group, and that go off onto the left group. And now you're going to do two knots here. So the macrame square knot is what you use to do the cobra pattern. And we have a video actually on Shambhala bracelets, but it's just to show macrame square knotting. So it's the Shambhala bracelet part one, macrame square knotting. If you aren't familiar with the square knots, it can be helpful to get that down. So first we're going to take our left cord and go over the center cord. Take the gray cord and pull it over the left cord, under the middle, and up through the loop. And then you're going to go over to your right group and you're going to mirror that. So you're going to take your left cord underneath, bring the right cord under the gray cord, over the middle, and down through. Okay. And now you can see here that your black cords are wanting to cross already, so that's fine. We want them to cross. That's how you're going to keep your two braids together instead of being separate. So I'm going to bring the left cord over the top of the right cord and you want to keep that consistent as you work so that you have a nice, even, consistent little group of crossovers at the back. So now to the left, we're going to take the gray cord under the center, the black cord under the gray, over the center, down through the loop. And here you're going to take the black cord over the center, the gray over, under, and through. And now I'm just going to finish those square knots and that will give me, since I don't, I don't cross these over again, I'm just going to do every other knot will cross over. So basically when it's a, a black cords in the center, they will cross. When it's gray cords in the center, they will not. And that will give you the nice double line all the way down the middle. So for the left hand knot, you just continue with your square knots, which means you're going to alternate which cord is on top so that it doesn't twist. Then the right one goes under. Okay, and then again, I'm gonna take the left of the center cords and take it over the right. So take your cord under the center, under, over, and through. On this side, over the center, over, under, and through. And then since I have gray in the center, I'm going to keep them on the same side. I'm not going to cross them. All the way to the left side, you're going to take your left cord over, over, under, and through. And in your second knot, you're going to start with under. And now you have your 
black cords in the center. We are going to cross them over, take the left over the right. And you're just going to continue to knot this way. You can see when you get a few done that you have two nice cobra braids side by side. On the back, you can see the little X's where the black cords cross over, and that's what keeps it together. So you're going to go ahead and the number that you figured out in the beginning for how many inches you need your knotting to be, you're going to go ahead and finish that. For my purposes, I need it to be six and a quarter to make a bracelet for a standard men's eight inch wrist. So I'm just gonna finish that up. You'll go ahead and braid almost as much as you want your full length braid to be. So I'm leaving myself about an inch and a half at the bottom here. You can see I'm, I'm trying to just replicate this size here. This is about six and a quarter inches of braiding. And so you can see here that I've stopped about an inch and a half shy. So what you need to do now is attach your second half of the clasp. And the reason you don't do this at the beginning like you do with a lot of other paracord bracelets is because it's easier to do this kind of knotting without the ends attached because you gotta weave through the middles. So what we're gonna do is just take our center cord and bring it through here and right down the center. Okay, go ahead and flip the whole thing over. And give yourself enough slack for the rest of the braid that you need. So if you need another inch and a half of braid, go ahead and give yourself another inch and a half there. If you have a ruler or something else, I'm just going to go ahead and hold mine up to this one because I know that that's the same length that I want. Okay. And then next you're going to cut the center cords right about at where your braiding stops. And we're going to fuse these ends onto the cord here. And we want to do it up a little further so that there's room for them to get knotted over, which is what makes that bond nice and strong. It is a little tricky to fuse the cord to itself. We're going to just go ahead and start with one side first. And cutting it to that length gives you a good way to check and make sure that you're holding it in the right spot. When you melt it, you are going to lose a little bit of length off of it though, so once you've got it in the right place, make sure you don't move it around too much. So again, you're going to want to use just a cheap plastic lighter. You don't want one with shrink wrap on the sides, and you want one, you make sure that you're not going to be sad if it gets wrecked. You're going to push it down onto itself with the side of the lighter. Just be careful, that will burn you like crazy. It's very hot. And if it doesn't stick the first time, that's all right. One way that's helpful is to try to go ahead and not have your finger right there. If you can melt this side a little bit, that can be helpful. Don't melt all the way through it or else you won't have a cord to knot on. 
Again, what's really going to hold it is the knotting that goes over the top. So as long as you can keep it in place, it's probably good enough. All right, so once you have one side fused, you're gonna just go ahead and repeat with the other side and make sure that you keep it even, that you don't have it crooked or your, belt, your uh, buckle won't sit straight. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead and flip our work back over and you're going to continue your knotting right over your strands just doubled up as they are. So just like before, you're going to do your knotting, but you need to now pull the strands between here, which is why we waited until closer to the end. So once you've done the rest of this knotting, it should be pretty easy to do this part, even though technically it's a little bit more difficult, but you should understand the way it works well enough to not get confused by having those attached right there. over So I think there's room for about one more. And right in here is where it can get really tricky. And you can move your knots down and up a little bit. What you're doing is separating them or compacting them. So if it seems like it's not going to fit another whole knot there, you can move them up or down. The more you push them up, the more sturdy it's gonna be. So, but if you want to like show an interesting color in the core or something like that, you could also pull them down. All right, so I'm gonna try to fit one more in there. And now I'm going to pull these center strings both to the back.
because it's hard to fuse down the middle without hitting the rest of your strings. So just go ahead and pull those center strings both to the back. And we'll go ahead and fuse the ends on the outside first. So just like with a standard Cobra bracelet, pretty much most paracord bracelets, you're gonna snip the ends right off. Leave yourself a little bit, about maybe between an eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch, somewhere in there. And then you're gonna take your lighter and melt the end. And all that extra that you left yourself, go ahead and wait for that to get all melty. You can see it happen. And when it's pretty liquid looking, take the side of the lighter and squish it in. And if it's messy, that's not a big deal because you can just go in with scissors or flush cutters and trim it off. But you do want it to spread out. That's going to keep it from popping back through. And if it's scratchy or uneven, you can just remelt it a little bit and smooth it out. Do that for both of your outside ends. And if you hold it in place while it cools, I found that it gives you a little bit of a smoother end. Okay, now we just need to finish off these back pieces here. And just the same way, you're gonna trim it down. And then try to angle the buckle away. You don't want to melt the buckle. And try not to hit a lot of the other. Try not to hit a lot of the other cords. Try to just melt it right where your ends are. This is tricky. I'm trying to figure out a good way to show it. Here we go. This is a tricky thing to do, and it's okay if you get a little bit of the other cords. It's hard because the flame goes up, so it's really hard to show the angle right. But just try to just get the two ends fused. Okay, see, so you get a little bit on here too. It is the back side of the bracelet. The important part is not to go all the way through and weaken your cords, and also to make sure that you really get a good, nice fuse on those. So those aren't going anywhere, and it doesn't show on the front side anyway. And you can see that's all done. And that's how you make a wide or double Cobra paracord bracelet.